In this video, I'm going to break down frame rates. And the reason why frame rates can be so difficult to understand is because there are a lot to choose from and there's some math involved. The most common frame rates are 24, 30, 60, and even 120. But which one should you film at? when and why, and how should you best deal with mixed frame rates when you're editing. For quick context, I'd worked in broadcast television for about 15 years, and I direct and edit music videos and commercials, etc. So I have a decent amount of experience working with frame rates. For the purpose of this video, I'm gonna focus on North American frame rates, so I won't be touching on PALS 25 and 50 FPS. Okay, just to level set frame rate, what is it? So it's measured in seconds and it's essentially how many frames or images are shown within one second to give the perception of movement. So it's frames per second. Motion pictures are based on an optical illusion. Just another case where seeing is believing. But what's really important to consider and what often makes frame rate kind of confusing is that there's a shooting frame rate and an editing frame rate. And there's actually even an export frame rate but we won't worry about that right now we'll just talk about a shooting frame rate and an editing frame rate so if you shoot and edit in the same frame rate then 24 frames per second generally will make it look more cinematic 30 frames tends to look more like video and higher frame rates like 48 60 and above look more hyper real because there are that many more frames squeezed into each second. So to cut right to the chase, I shoot nearly everything in 24 frames per second and I recommend that young video creators do the same, but you clearly don't have to. You can shoot and edit in 30 frames per second, it's no big deal and most people won't really notice. Besides your content is much more important than your frame rate anyway. So why do I shoot 24 FPS? Well, first, it kind of gives me that cinematic look that I'd like to go after. Two, it gives me more creative freedom when working with other frame rates in a 24 frame timeline or sequence. And the third option is it kind of standardizes all my footage as 24 across everything else that I shoot. So in some ways, it future proofs it. That being said, some recent Hollywood films like The Hobbit and Gemini Man have experimented with higher frame rates, so who knows, the new standard in the future may be 48 frames per second. And if it loses, like that. Nevertheless, 24 frames per second is known to be more cinematic because it's been the Hollywood standard for almost 100 years, ever since uh, they synchronized sound with picture. Wait a minute, I tell you. But there's obviously a lot more involved than frame rate to make something look cinematic, like lighting, lens choice, depth of field, camera movement, etc. But it's a great starting point. 24 frames per second with the right shutter speed or shutter angle gives the right amount of blur that most closely resembles our own vision. So right now I'm shooting at 24 frames per second at 1 50th of a shutter. So the motion of my hand should relatively match the motion of your own hand in front of your own face. Because I mentioned shutter speed, I wanna talk about it just for a second so it can make a little bit more sense. Shutter speed is measured in seconds and it's the length of time that the sensor is exposed to light and it's represented in fractions. For example, a shutter of 1 50th holds the shutter open for 1 50th of a second. As mentioned, if you're shooting 24 frames, you usually shoot at 1 50th to get the right motion blur. If you're shooting 30 frames a second, you double that to get 1 60th. If you're shooting 60 frames, you double that to get 1 20th of a second. So basically this follows the 180 degree shutter angle that most cinema cameras are set to. So it would always be doubling the frame rate. To try and explain the 180 degree shutter angle, I've cut a piece of cardboard here a uh, circle in half. This is what would actually look like in a film camera. You'd expose with light, goes to black, it's going to the next frame, and then it would expose with light, and then it would be black, etc. as it rotates around. So I'm gonna get a little too technical for a second uh, because what I said before is actually an error. When I say you double your frame rate, you're actually not doubling your frame rate because we're dealing with fractions. So if we're talking about 30 frames a second, one frame is 1 30th of a second. And with a 180 degree shutter, it's getting light half the time. So you're actually halving 1 30th and half of 1 30th is 1 60th. Same thing with 1 60th, half of that is 1 20th. It's complicated, it's math, so it's much easier to think about and to say just double your frame rate to get your shutter speed. But you don't have to stick to these rules of doubling your shutter speed, but once you learn the rules, you learn when to break them and hopefully there's some creative intent behind 
that. I'll save a more in-depth discussion about shutter speed for another video, so let's get back to frame rate. So the more you know about frame rate, the more you can use it to your creative advantage. For example, if you have a 24 frame per second timeline and you have a 30 frame clip, when you bring that in, you can reduce the speed by 80% to get a bit more of a dreamy slow motion effect. So this is best used for when you don't need people's mouth matching what they're saying, essentially B-roll shots. It takes a bit of the edge off and makes it a bit more, as I said, dreamy. For example, I shot a music video last year where some of the scenes were shot at 30 frames per second, but I wanted the artist to be singing along to the song as well. So to do that, you speed up the music track to 125%, so that when they're singing the song, they're singing a little faster. And then when you bring that footage into the timeline, it's slowed down to 24 frames a second and he's now in sync. Magic. We wanna thank you. But if you were to bring a 30 frame per second clip into a 24 frame timeline, it's not the end of the world. Most people won't even notice, but what actually has to happen is that you have to lose six frames to get to 24 frames. And what the program software automatically does is it removes every fifth frame. It's just simple math. Five goes into 36 times. And once you remove those six frames, uh, you're at 24. The same and opposite is true for a 24 frame clip going into a 30 frame timeline. It needs to make up six frames to get to 30. So what it does, it just does simple math and every fourth frame it duplicates. In both cases, the footage is going to look fine. Most people wouldn't even notice, but because you're either taking away or adding frames, there will be a slight jitter. And when it comes to 60 frames a second, some people are like, Ooh, I love slow motion. It looks so cool. I'll always shoot at 60 frames per second and I'll just choose when to slow down the footage and when to make it regular speed. Cool. You can do that. But remember that if you're shooting 60 frames a second in order to have the ability to slow it down effectively, you have to be working in a 24 or 30 frame timeline, even a 48, anything less than 60 essentially. So you have those extra frames to play with when you actually want to slow them down. If you're working in a 30 frame timeline, you can slow it down by half. If you're working in a 24 frames timeline, you can slow it down by 40%. So if you're shooting at 60 frames and editing in 60 frames per second, just realize that if you wanted to try and slow it down, you're just going to be duplicating frames to simulate slow motion. And I don't think that's the look you're going for. So at the start, I posed some questions. What frame rate should you shoot in? When and why? Making videos is creative. It's storytelling. So what story do you want to tell and how do you want people to feel when they're watching? Frame rate and shutter speed, it's, it's just a tool and you want to use the right tool for the right job. So shoot slow motion or a higher frame rate when you want that moment to be extended, when you want it to be surreal, slowed down. And shooting slow motion can help if you're shooting handheld and want to reduce some of that bumpiness that comes along with shooting handheld. And if you're making videos for YouTube and you're sitting down talking to a camera, it really doesn't matter if you're shooting 24 or 30 frames a second. As long as you edit in that same frame rate, who cares? But if you're doing commercial work, music videos, short films, or want your videos to be a little bit more cinematic for whatever reason, then I would recommend 24 frames a second. And so would your clients. So that's frame rates. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, you know where to put them. Thanks.